All right, guys, I'm back. I don't know why I said it like that, but I am back. I'm going to show you guys everything that Simpler can do in this video. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we got me in the little corner down there. And I'm going to put Simpler onto the track. I'm just going to drag and drop it right here. And there you go. We got Simpler right down here. The first thing you could do is literally just drop a sample. Let's go to the Ableton sample here. So I can just click on anything. Okay, let's use that. I like that, right? So I could just hit any note. It goes up and down in uh, tones if you play around with the keyboard. So you can make a chord. You know what I mean? So Simpler allows you to screw with, obviously, samples. So when it comes to the classic, uh, you could choose how many voices to have here. This is more for if you want to turn the sample into like an instrument because with voices, you could allow multiple notes playing. When it comes to one shot here, it only allows one voice. So it's a one shot. There's no more voices you can add. No more than one note playing at the same time. And also, and when it comes to one shot, it's better for drums because the sound is going to actually finish. You don't have to actually hold the note down forever. So let me, let me just show you. Where with classic, I have to actually hold it down. You know, like... Really gotta hold it till it ends. So slicing is literally like fucking around with the sample and using like parts of the sample. This is better with, let's say, songs if you want. And you can really just, you could really just change it however you want. You're clicking different notes, you're going up and down. So this is C1, this is C sharp. Uh... Uh, sorry, yeah, C sharp and then D for the third one. It goes up like that on your keyboard. Very simple to use. Like I said, this works better for like Kanye West type sampling things. If you want to do like sampling chunks of songs and play around with your keyboard, that's typically what you would use it for. So now that we're done with all the modes, let me go back to classic and tell you exactly what everything does down here. So down here, you can see that there's a filter. You can turn it on or off. So the filter down here is basically just a high, uh, high pass filter. And you can put a low pass filter, however you want to, you know, screw with the sample. It's basically just an e another EQ you can use, for example. So let me just put it just to show you exactly what it does. So it's literally the same thing as this. So you see that little knob here? It's the same thing. You know, you're doing the, you're putting the filter down here. It's just that you're doing it on the actual sound and not after the sound is processed in the simpler. So there's an order to it because you can't actually put an EQ before the sound is processed, as you can see here. It, it is useful, but like only in certain situations where you really wanna have a specific sound that you're going for. So let's take the filter off here and keep the filter down here. So let me show you what it does. As you can see, it just clears the high, high pass filter, and then low pass. Actually, this is a high pass because it makes it high only, and then uh, low pass makes it low. Okay, so there's all types of different filters you could use. This one just uh, picks a certain frequency and keeps it there. So anyways, let's, let's move on. And then the resonance is kind of how high you let that peak go at the frequency so the gain is is the volume before the input comes in so that's gonna be really loud put it a little higher and then we have the volume at the end here which is the output of the sound so they're very similar but like i said there is an order to things so sometimes you're gonna want an effect before or after depends what you want to do exactly so this is the start of the loop, and then you have also the length of it, which is the end of the loop. You could also just use this if you want. It's basically the same thing. It's just preference. So here we have the button loop, which is actually, you're just gonna loop a certain part. So let's try to loop a very small portion of it. As you can see, it loops the sound. So let's turn it off. It's not looping anymore when I hold it. There you go. And the warp button here basically warps it to the certain speed of the track. So let's say I'm at 120 BPM. Everything is going to be warped at 120 BPM. So let's play it. It's the same speed. If I turn it off, you can see that if I go higher in pitch and lower in pitch, it's different speeds. Depends what you want to do. Like I said, you can literally just do some crazy loops, samples, create your own instruments if you want. 
see the difference between warp and not warp because it has to do with the speed, right? So you create your own sounds. It's better if you want to do a chord with uh, warped because it actually keeps it at the same speed. A minor. See, it kind of sounds like a mess, but you could you could do that if you want. But if I click warp, it's going to be a cleaner sound. There's a better order to it, right? So the one bar here is basically the speed you want to warp it at. So you could just do kind of whatever you want. If you make the speed of the sample times two, then it's going to obviously be slower, half slow. And then we go down divided by two or whatever, by two, by two, by two again, it's going to be faster. So let's go back to, to whatever it was before. Let's not warp it. The attack like on every other VST. So right now it's at zero. It's got no time. It, it's as soon as you hit the button, as soon as the MIDI plays, the sound plays. But then if I click attack, it'll slowly come in. If I put the attack at like, let's say 25 milliseconds, it's going to be a bit slower. You can really notice the difference at like maybe try even more. There we go. So the decay and sustain are kind of working together because the decay is the how long the sustain is going to go for. So right now the sustain is at zero decibels. So no change in how loud the sound is after a certain amount of time. So let's say the decay, we put it at, let's say one second, just to give you an idea. And all right, it's about one second. There's not going to be any change because I didn't change the, sus the sustain. But now, once I change the sustain, the volume is going to go down after a second. So it's going to go down by, let's say, 20 decibels. And it stays there. That's the sustain. So the release is how long after you hit the keyboard, the sound keeps playing. Like the one shot, the one shot basically has an infinite release. It just, the sound will keep playing until it's done, basically. So for example, if I click on one millisecond, the sound will stop as soon as I basically stop hitting the key. But then if I hit the release on like, let's say a second, it's kind of like sustain and decay, but the release is basically it flows down to infinite decibels minus infinite decibels. So it goes to like nothing. It's basically a fade away kind of for the volume. And then obviously at the end here, we have the volume, like I said earlier. And that's basically it for the little buttons down here. So for the one shot, we have the fade in, fade out, very self-explanatory, basically the attack, you know, and then the release, very similar. And they're very similar in terms of like, it's it's still we're still using simpler right and then transpose is going to be how you how you want the pitch to go so let's say we bring it up so it changes during the sound as well right so that means you can automate it so you can literally just hit the key during the song and then pitch it and kind of do crazy stuff like that that's the advantage of the one shot so you can do that with like drums interesting sounds or just stuff that you want to be one shot so volume velocity is a knob where you can decide let's say at zero percent that the volume is going to be static no matter how hard you hit the keys it doesn't change how hard i hit the keyboard but with velocity at a high let's say at a higher percentage it'll be much more up and down in volume so i can go really low There you go. It, it changes. So let's bring it back down to what it was before. Usually 35 is a good like percentage because it kind of keeps it not going up and down too much. In music production, you don't want to have the, that kind of like dynamic going on. I mean, you can, but it depends what you're trying to do. But 35 for a general rule of thumb is good. And then we go for the slice part. And it's the same exact thing with the fade in, fade out, transpose volume velocity and volume we also have a filter down here does one shot have a filter yes it does so for the slice part the only difference here is going to be the slice by so what you want how you want ableton to automatically detect the slices usually you're going to go by transient or if you already put the transients into the beat into the timeline for example here and you put them perfectly onto on the beat then you can just do on beat because you already set the transients to on beat but usually ableton can detect the, the transients because of like drums and stuff like that for samples that you put in or you could also just do it by manual with your hands you know you just kind of move around whichever one you want uh usually you're gonna want to you know kind of move it because uh, ableton's ai is not perfect all the time you can just choose whichever parts you want to select a better example for this would probably be 
an actual beat. Like, let's go, uh, we'll go for a drum. Okay, sure, let's grab that. This sampled everything by transient, so I basically have the entire drum set on my keyboard. But let's say we did it by beat. So now that's different. Oh, let's go back. All right, so now I'm actually gonna be playing. Yeah, you can screw around with it, but that's that's basically how it works. And there you go, guys. Simpler. That's how you use it. Now, for simpler, you can literally put whatever you want in it. It's it's as you can see here, I put a whole ass loop that has that's like 105 BPM. But then if you go to classic, you might want to put like one shots or just like instrument sounds because that's more for your instruments. And then for one shot, you're going to want to put your drums or whatever you want to sample, screw up and down. And that's pretty much it. For the simpler, the best tool for sampling in Ableton, it's honestly pretty pretty great. I use all my drums in it. I create sounds out of like sam actual samples. So, you know, go have fun. Go be creative. My name is Tiny. It was a pleasure having you here. You can go check out my music in the description down below. Check out my beats. You can DM me on Instagram, whatever, if you want me to mix and master your music. And as always, stay healthy. And I'm signing out. By the way, I've been along, I've been away for like a month now, but I will be back with regular uploads. Gonna try to stick to the schedule this time. School got in the way, other things, life got in the way, but I will not let this stop me. We are going up, baby. Next few uploads will be more vlog style and fun stuff. I'll keep the tutorials going because that seems to work for the algorithm. Anyways, guys, I'm out. See ya.